Welcome to West of Tulsa. I'm C.J. Ward. We are broadcasting from Ventura, California. We're just, what, a mile or two from the beach? That's right. Right? We, I think, we all have sunscreen on. Ventura right? Tourism giving <laughs> yeah. you a plug there, <laughs> They CJ? are, You're getting some, some yeah. sponsorship dollars here. It's a great right? town. Is it, is it Ventura? Ventura? Almost everybody's here. Helm's not here. No. No. He's too busy gallivanting around with Joe Coy. No, oh, that, that's what he's doing, huh? Joe Coy. Uh, well, he, was, he went to, he went to um, the Valley Relics Museum for a private screening, a last-minute private screening for Joe Coy's new comedy special. And um, he got to hang with Joe Coy. He sent, you know, he took pictures that we posted on our so, uh, on our Instagram. But uh, he connected with our good buddy of ours, uh, Tommy uh, Gelinas. I think that's his last name, Gelinas or Gelinas. Starts with a G. Um, <laughs> Valley and, Relics, right? And Valley, Valley Relics, Valley yeah, Relics. yeah, yeah. Who, yep. who's which is pretty incredible. Yeah, we've known Can't him for yeah. we've known him for a very long time, and he got to connect with him. And um, we plan to do a show with him because um, he's also a hot rodder. Yeah, and uh, he has an amazing collection. If you haven't been to the Valley Relics Museum, I suggest you go. It's amazing. It's in in Van Nuys, and you must subscribe to their Facebook because I I get stuff every single day on my phone from yeah. Valley Relics feed that I'm like I remember that when I was a kid. Oh. It's so cool. Yeah, the Facebook and their Instagram. Tommy's always posting. He stuff. curates a lot. I mean, oh, he posts daily, and he's always posting cool. So stuff. much great stuff. old yeah. photos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And neon signs photos. and old yeah. restaurant yeah. signs. That's awesome. And, yeah. I definitely want to check out that place yeah. for sure. I interviewed him over ten years ago, and one of the lines that he said I'll never forget was, um, "I'm a." He's like, "I'm a collector. I'm a this, but." This is an obsession for him. He is obsessed with oh, it. Yeah, and you'd have time. to be to ha collect yeah. the type of stuff that, I mean, signage from back when I was a kid and beyond, you know. Did he inherit all this? No, he just went and got it all, bought it all. He put so, it together. Yeah. Oh. Um, he would find um, places that were going out of business or they're tearing yeah. it down. He would go to them and say, hey, I want the sign. I'll buy the sign or I'll take the sign yeah. or whatever. And, and people should understand, too, when you say Valley Relics, we're talking the San Fernando Valley. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Correct. he just Correct. has an obsession for anything San Fernando yeah, Valley. Yeah. He's also covered um, Los Angeles, too, because he has a lot of Los Angeles. How could you not? They're so close together. But sure. um, mostly San Fernando Valley. Right. Yeah. So it's it's quite amazing. Is he older? Well, define older. I mean, is he older than we? I'm older than you. And <laughs> no, you and you I and you. But is he's... he... Fifth? I mean, he acts so young. So it is an obsession. I mean, this is oh, from, from younger yeah. years on. 100%. 100%. Awesome. I mean... Yeah, he is. Even before he started the museum, he had in his uh, he has a screen printing business, and in his business he had a whole room dedicated just to just you know, most people might call it crap, but it's all all the stuff that he collected about the Valley Relics, and he's taken me through this stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, I used to eat there. I remember <laughs> yeah. going here as a kid. That's the best. Oh yeah, field trip. Oh yeah, gotta go down. I saw a huge okay. Pioneer chicken. Oh sign. Yeah. yes, I, that was my first job. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's Pioneer Chicken. Don't you know. don't delve into that. You know, it's funny. Him and I, uh, Tommy and I, went to Pioneer Chicken one time. The last Pioneer Chicken uh, that was uh, somewhere in, in in L.A. and ate Pioneer Chicken. <laughs> as I think we recorded it too. It was like the the last Pioneer Chicken, and I think it's I don't know if it's still there. I think I, it's still standing. I'm, it. It. I'm pretty I sure. It. It. Oh, I Pioneer couldn't eat it. I couldn't eat it anymore. Is no. this where you destroyed your first pair of glasses? Yeah. What car did you drive to your job there? Did you just I hit my BMW 2002 oh. back then. Wow. And my, one of my first ones. Okay. Are we going to ask yeah. what everyone drove today? <clears throat> 2010 Honda minivan. Honda okay. Odyssey minivan. And how about Beth? What did 2019 you Acura TLX. Gay. I don't want to say. I know what you drove. What did you drive? Come on, let us know. We'll take a picture and post it. Tesla. Tesla. Oh, okay. Oh, the toaster. I drove my 2001 uh, Bullet Mustang. Okay, oh, he wins. Oh, uh, man. Nice. Man. I don't think Dan's Corolla is going to beat that. No, no, my Corolla is not going to beat that. <laughs> no. so. This, might be, this might, might be TMI. What's the worst stain, trash, fill in the blank in your car right now at this moment? Stain? Like a or stain or trash? Or just something, something tra stain or trash? Mm. Um, my three-year-old's many stains mess around her. <laughs> <In the back. laughs> around her area? Okay. Yes, her it? department, her area, her section okay. of the car, That's which the is worst. a lot of it. How about you, CJ? I just cleaned it, so it's pretty nice. No, it's not. <laughs> You're something gross. You know, I don't know. I mean, I try to ignore the ugliness of the minivan. Okay. I mean, there's got to be coffee stains somewhere in there, there you but go. that's probably the worst. Bingo. How part. about okay. you, Alex? <laughs> mm, I don't really open things too much in this car. So probably a, a wrapper for some breath mints Good or something. Answer. Good answer. Yeah. Do you still not, have plastic on the seats? Bad. Damn the man. No. <laughs> I'm, not that I'm not that crazy. I, dr I drive this car. <laughs> I parked my car in front of the Belasco Theater downtown LA because I've been doing a gig there. 
and they have a these giant i think they're like mulberry trees or something and they're disgusting like they're they're you step on them when you're like getting yes. out of your car yeah. and they're all over my car and they're like dried mm. it's like pretty nasty because i usually keep my car pretty clean and it's just it's pretty nasty so far right you're now. the winner your paint might yeah. be disintegrating i know yeah, exactly. i know <laughs> yeah it's not good oh, man i asked because i opened my driver door and i have a dried from i don't know two months ago um matcha lavender something that my daughter bought me and as i was getting in the car it flew all oh. over the door and it's still there so when i open the door it's so embarrassing I'm like oh <laughs> by the way it's very good to have you back it's so nice to yeah, be yeah, back Beth. i've missed you guys I people know, were really. like saying where is she? They, yeah. Some people thought I took you out. <laughs> like, Insurance settlement. What'd you do with your I wife? I took myself out. Double indemnity. <laughs> She's like, I'm done with these guys. I'm out of here. <laughs> Insurance stuff. Yeah, we're oh. glad to have her back. Yeah, we miss we missed having you on the show, Beth. Thanks. Yes. It is nice yeah. to You be make back. the show better. Thanks, you guys. Yes, oh. absolutely. Your, your fans were revolting. Oh, well, I have yeah. so much fun. I feel so honored to be here and just kind of, I'm, I'm along for the ride. That's my motto. <laughs> Right? You're going to get a t-shirt it's a good, made good with motto. that? Yeah. Right show. I need that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. We can have a Beth line of merchandise, right? West of Tulsa. Like I'm that. along for the ride. Yeah. 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 Sure. I like it. Well, I haven't introduced everybody. So Gabe is here, obviously. He's, he's been chatting it up quite a bit. We got Alex Aragosa, his back. Yes. And Dan's back. I'm back. Yeah. You kicked Alex out of that seat. Yeah. And is now taking over controls again. Yep. So we got everybody except for Helm, and now we know why Helm's not here. Yes. He's yes. hanging with the Filipino comedian. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Joe Coy's awesome. big. He's, yes, he's, a, he is. he's he a big is. guy, man. He's really popular. Yes, he yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. So that means Helm's just too good for it. Helm moves in is high that circles. What, is that yeah. what you're saying? Jay yeah. Leno, yeah. Yeah. Well, Joe Helm, Coy. I always make That's the it. joke. Uh, a lot of people make this joke, but I make this joke particularly with Helm that he's always gallivanting around. Gallivanting. And you say it in the Filipino accent, it's gallivanting. <laughs> gallivanting. <laughs> yeah. Gallivanting. Yes. With the lumpia. Yes. Helm is definitely gallivanting around. But... Good That's for him. What he does best, he's yeah. always he's representing West of Tulsa. He's getting us a lot of uh, connections to stories um, yeah. and and digging up a lot of stuff for us. So, you know, I'm, kind of our marketing guy at this point, right? Yeah, sadly, yeah. yeah we have, he's, we he's, have he's no the money. Best. He's yeah. the best. He's our social butterfly. Like yeah. anywhere yes. you go with Helm, if there's a bunch of strangers, it'll be he'll just be like deep in conversation yes. with ten of them right away. He's yeah. just that so guy. True. Yeah, mm -hmm. look forward to him sitting back in the seat too. Absolutely. For, sure. Okay. for sure, and I'm done talking about him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, well, let's talk about our tip line. Yes. So we have our tip line. You go to if you want to be on the show, join us here in studio. You can go to our website westatulsa.com, click on the tip line page, which apparently isn't working right now, right? I or something isn't work working. I don't know if it's not working. I just don't know if maybe people are not understanding what it is because the tip line is kind of misleading. In a sense, it's, I think it's cool. It's newsy. It's though. newsy. It's yeah. newsy. Which, yeah. Yeah. Which, it is. Mm -hmm. which is fine. But really, the tip line is for people to s tell the, tell us their story. You know, it, you know, we have people DMing us on Instagram and commenting. So I was like, hey, I used to do this. And I was like, is if you did that on the tip line, we would get it. We could all read it. Right. You know, not everybody checks our socials. So do we change the name? Do we Maybe. call it something else? Always well, we put it to the audience. What do you think we should call it? I call mean, it advice line? Like, hey, you need life advice or something? Well, you, 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 don't want, you don't want life advice <laughs> about, too much. No, we are the no, worst no. people to ask for advice like, on that. Uh, we already spawned advice? a dating no. show. So, no? yeah. yeah which, which, by the way, shout out to Christina and yeah. uh, Melissa. They're doing the, it's called Cars Speed dating or something like that yeah, that's yeah. their instagram Car speed dating yeah oh melissa's doing like that, that with her huh yeah oh, yeah cool. so they're kind of tag teaming on them. that yeah that's and awesome i think they're they're working on their first event which should be pretty soon. i mean is it I up and going right now the instagram is up so they're trying to build the brand right now get awareness right. out there and get people out there they're posting a lot of interesting date like dating facts it's pretty interesting is it only <laughs> like, targeting say subaru drivers or ford drivers no, or is it whoever anyone. whoever, whoever. Anyone. You're, okay. you're a car person um you're single hopefully still single and and not married uh hopefully and, and you're into dating so you want to well you uh, think car community would be the ones that were mainly coming to this so it's going to be a like-minded group right. which Correct. is a great Correct. idea Correct. Yeah. so we did discuss with them though what if someone's not a car person would you date a non-car person and melissa was like yeah for sure i don't want to compete with a car there guy it's yeah. like good you answer know, i do but my it, car thing but at the same yep. time she was like if you can't drive a stick i'm like yeah all my yeah. cars are stick <laughs> yeah. you know true, true. so i think i think there's a uh, a balance right so you say a non-car person like my wife 
might not be considered a car person. She really likes cars, but she likes particular type of cars. I'll consider. Can I'll she look. drive a stick? Yeah. Oh, oh good. yeah. I'm impressed. That's good because yeah. she's she's not old like me. I mean, CJ and I, we can drive a stick because we're old, right? Yeah. That's what you <laughs> I do. Can I can drive a stick because I'm old. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. going to say <laughs> that bad because you're a lady and you never say a lady's <laughs> old. <but. laughs> it's okay. And, uh, I'm in. Right. I'm in with the group. It's all good. But uh, but someone your wife's age, I mean, she's not old and she can mm-hmm. drive a stick, and she's a female, which is like that's that's pretty, you know. That's unusual these days. Yeah, well, careful. Now someone's going to call you misogynistic, Dan. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're getting comments like that, which is, that's not the case at all. It's just statistically, right. more men drive manuals. Just, just a, a statistic. Right. Right. I know plenty of men who can't drive a stick. And this I, I just came true. across oh, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a man who can't ride a bike. I mean, it, really? it, it, yes. A bicycle or a motorcycle? <laughs> a bicycle. <laughs> that's sad. That's Never very sad. Ride, that's ride sad. A bike. I wonder if that's Helm. No, it's not Helm. <laughs> but I He's said, not, okay, we've got to teach you how to ride a bike. Was Is this like a grown man? It's a, a young man in his 20s. Wow. That's Never sad. Never learned how wow. to ride a bike. That's very sad. I know. My, wife, my wife can drive a, a stick also. She, um, I taught her when we were in our early 20s. I used to have a little mini truck, and she said she wanted to drive it, so I taught her to drive nice. a stick. Awesome. And she nice. drives stick till this day. That's she, great. She drives the bullet. So I, I should good. rescind my statement. Yes. I, uh, that was sexist. I shouldn't have said that. Women <laughs> women can drive a stick. Just, <laughs> yeah, I'm there you go. This. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to backpedal. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Because I have that prerogative to backpedal. <laughs> and you know how to ride a bike, so you can backpedal. Okay, <laughs> good. Now, now, how many people can ride a unicycle is what I want to know. That's I impressive. I probably could, but not well. Anyone else ride a unicycle? It for a little bit. No, never no. tried. Did you ever like have a high school friend and he's like riding a unicycle and you're like, what are you thinking? Dude? No, yeah. never. There was I a did. guy in my high no. school like ride around on a unicycle. It's like, dude, you're not going to get any chicks that way. Those <laughs> guys are suspicious to me. It why is, did, why it do you want suspicious. something with one wheel? Yeah, I don't yeah. understand. Well, now that. these guys on the one wheel, right? The one wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. and they go 80 miles an hour. I know. Yeah. It's I know. crazy yeah. to see that. There's a guy in my neighborhood that that whizzes around on the one wheel, and he's like he's like a car. He's got like a rear view mirror here, and he's like going in the lane with the cars, going like 40, 50. And yeah. I'm like, that's crazy. I know. He it won't, is. He won't live much longer. <laughs> Young guy. I don't, I don't think know. so. And we got off topic, I think, we, just we a did. little bit. But we, we were coming we up with all, a new name for the tip line. We haven't all talked together and, for so long. There's a lot to talk okay, about. Okay, maybe there is. And now our yeah. audience is subjected to all of this blabble I mean, I know. because... You know, we haven't seen each other, but that's okay. Yeah. Hopefully it's entertaining. Well, we're kind of come up with okay, some so ideas. back to tip that's line. So, so what are the votes for tip line? Well, Dan, you had a good, a good, good suggestion there. What was it? What and, was it? Um, it, no, it wasn't advice. Storyline. 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 Storyline or whatever. But, you know. Storyline's good because when people pitch like yeah. in Hollywood, it's like, what's the storyline? What's yeah. the storyline? So, and it is, you know, like, like tip line, but it's a little more specific. That's not bad. Storyline. Storyline. Car yeah. comments. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll put this car on. We'll put this on comments? Instagram. We'll put do a vote out there. We'll do a, do a poll, poll on yeah. Instagram and see okay. what people say. And you know, yeah, the majority will speak. And then you're gonna CG. have to redo that cool graphic, though, Gabe. I don't know. <laughs> That's a cool. <laughs> That's graphic. what he does. Yeah. You know. I would just urge viewers to to put it into gear and and let us know. Tell us their stories. Yeah. And yeah. we do want to hear Obvi- them. And obviously today we're gonna talk about stories because we have a lot of stories. Some yes. Not so great. Some some great. But um. Yep. Um. That's the whole point is to capture these stories. And and to people that want to be on the show or can't be on the show or whatever, we want to find a way to just capture the story. You know, that's right. the most important part, you know, is capturing the story. Tell it. Yep. And have come, you come and have on you tell and it. tell yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I, I, don't, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but is this... I've been looking at my ugly mug here for a long time. Well, it's auto potting, so I'm not. Oh, I'm not man. Oh, is that anymore. what's happening Look now? Look at that. Oh. We, use, we use the auto pod now. Look at so that. I'm just, my so ugly it just mug. goes on its own. So my yeah. switching duties have been relegated, as <laughs> yeah. Alex knows, just to like, wow. yeah, you can switch so if the, you want. Those but. of you who are listening, we're talking about the switching system yeah. that we use for our cameras, and it's a you know typically Dan will you know switch around on the camera, and we have a studio monitor to show you what. What's going? Well, that's not on right now, and right. CJ has been looking at his face in the monitor. <laughs> yeah, it was going, I don't me. like this. Well, it's, it was bothering me too. Yeah, so I was it's like, the what the CJ hell? Show. Who's yeah. that ugly dude? Because <laughs> I'm because I'm engaging in the Is conversation. I'm not okay. going. All right, all right, good. Typing away. I'm engaging that's right. in the conversation. We should have Cannonball yes. Run playing on the studio monitor while we do that show. <laughs> there you That'd go. Be good. That'd be Anyways, good. Gumball Rally. Gumball so, Rally. Yes. All, right. <laughs> all right. So people can submit their ideas for for tip line. Yeah, yeah. Just the new name. Just please go to the website. Go. Just to the tip line, whether whatever it's called, tip line or storyline or whatever, go there and just share a, a paragraph or two about your story. And it doesn't um, have to be your story because lots of people yeah. know other people. People are like, oh, you should meet this guy. This guy's got this yeah. amazing yes, collection. Yeah. It's yeah. like, we want to hear about we it. Tell actually, us, tell you us. know what's funny? We actually had a guy on the Instagram say, um, uh, I forget what post it was, but he was saying something about, oh, I know the guy that has that car or whatever. I was like, send us that. See, I already forgot. 
what well, the context was because yeah, it was a I, comment, and we get so many comments. And I remember that. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. We'll have to look oh, shoot. look back. But I was like, yeah, go to the tip line and just tell us that story, even if it's not yours. Right. And then we'll right. look into that. You know, that's yeah. one thing that that CJ and Beth and the rest of us do is we investigate these stories to find out. You know, not just if it's true, but like, <laughs> is this could be possible even is it worth telling yeah you know? is it, is it and most interesting of, and, and most stories are most yeah. stories i don't want to discourage people like oh my story is not interesting your story is interesting right um not may, might might not be to as many people as like seeing a story about i don't know some celebrity a, a or singer whatever. porsche a singer porsche yeah, <laughs> yeah. but <laughs> but as we're finding out you know the stories that we think that people might not be into they're really, really into it. that's yeah. a good point david neal yeah. case in point right yeah it's yeah. like the trailer thing beth did you watch oh, that episode i haven't watched it but i know him you know and david. i've seen yeah. that the museum was phenomenal the murphy museum and all the different trailers that he had there and you walk into one of those yeah. and you go back in time yeah big time i mean they're the beautiful. trailer boat one i think is one that the trailer yeah. boat was yeah. the one that got the big response yeah. Yeah. right and the wagon air the tra yeah. trailer boat and the the wagon air yeah the wagon air yeah, yeah. now and you've seen the wagon air about oh yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like they're, they're phenomenal that, i had never knew that existed and i saw like the, the period ad with the kids like standing up in the back <laughs> yes, hanging that's out right. like totally yep. he dangerous brought it, but... he brought it to cars and coffee two weeks ago yeah and um people were just like what the heck and when you see it in person, you're like, this is so cool. And he had the trailer boat attached to it. Absolutely. Yeah, they yeah. matched the patch, the paint. I mean, it, yeah, really it's a nice cool. combination we've seen yeah. together. Well, well Gabe and I, were, we were talking and we were like, you know, what we're discovering, what trends best in our audience is stuff they can't get anywhere else. And it's these obscure things. It's like niche stuff. Yeah. So we were looking for stuff like that. It's yeah. like, yeah, all the mainstream stuff's great, a Lamborghini, a Ferrari, a whatever. But the stuff, yeah, a trailer boat, it's like. Well, who would the think? thing is, we think it's obscure and niche, but there's like apparently the following is way bigger yeah, than we thought. Yeah. So, like, Vintage you know, trailer it just shows you what, yeah. uh, what little we know. So, we, instead of saying, oh, we think that story is good, or we think that story is good, or that's no good, is like we just treat everything as it's all good. We're just going to bring it to the surface. Let the audience decide. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because everything that we think we know, we, we, we don't well, know. Speaking of obscure, you know, platypus. Yeah. Remember we yeah. did the, art, the platypus, whole thing on platypus, platypus with Dana and Bruce well. Terry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is a bit obscure. I had yeah. lunch yesterday with Dana. He gave me an update yeah. on platypus. In fact, he's there right now with Bruce. Oh. They would be done with the body in two weeks. Wow. Wow. And cool. then it goes to electrical. They're going to mm -hmm. wire the whole thing up. The motor's ready to go. He thinks it'll be ready by the end of the year. Wow. Um, and he's going to bring it by. That's, that's accelerated quick. schedule. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. It is very quick. He, and he wasn't going to paint it, right? They're going to leave it the polished No, they're going to leave it like that. Yeah, like an polished airplane. Aluminum, like an air, right? yeah, yeah. airplane shell, if you yeah, will. Yeah, right. that thing's going to be amazing. Right. Yeah, I, can't I can't wait, wait to, to see it him. drive. Yeah, he, he had a big smile on his face when he was telling me about it. That's the cool. progress. I bet. That's awesome. Yeah, I guess Bruce is really, all those very difficult yeah, the you, wheels you know, the, and yeah, stuff. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The the steering mechanism. What would you call it? The the articulated the, steering mechanism. Yeah. yeah, and the fenders. They're built into the fenders. Yeah, that's all. Apparently, those are completed. So. Alex, did you see any of this platypus stuff? I we're did talking see about? a little bit of that. What, yeah. what did you think about it? It was pretty amazing. I like all that custom work. That was a uh, was pretty neat stuff. Yeah, Bruce is uh, that guy's a wizard. I mean, yeah, it, it's just seeing what he does was just like a human did this. I can't believe that. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll have platypus come by, but... Very cool. Look right. forward to it. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, were you were going to say something? No, I'm just reminiscing in my mind about obscure and weird things, and, and in the light, recent weeks, we've been talking a lot about family and family trips, and mm -hmm. CJ and I have been doing a lot of driving. Um, I don't know if people know, but his father passed... Last week. Last week. A week ago today. The patriarch of our family, yeah, yeah. And, and just a really amazing, big-hearted man, and really hard to see him go. And yeah. um, and I remember you talking about stories driving with the family in the station wagon to go see the rocket launches in Florida, yeah, right, we, when you yeah, were a we, kid. Yeah, back, this would be during the Apollo days, and we would drive down from Buffalo, and my grandparents lived in Vero Beach, Florida, and we would park along the A1A right outside Cape Canaveral, to watch the rocket launches wow. for the old Apollo. All the way from Buffalo you guys would drive? Oh, many. We did that many times. That's, wow. that's, how long yeah, is we, that drive? That's That's got to take like, what, a thousand miles probably? Wow. I don't like know. a couple days maybe? Yeah, probably took a couple yeah. days. And wow. your, dad, wow. your dad would not make one bathroom stop for the kids no, in a couple days? No, we actually had a Maxwell coffee can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if we, we want to go there. I don't know if no, we no, want to no, go You guys want to talk details about that one? No, probably not. I kind of do. Yeah. 
You can get away with with guys probably a little easier. Yeah. Than I would well, the imagine. fact that your parents drank Maxwell coffee says a lot right there. <laughs> <laughs> was it Folgers? This was early seventies, mid nineteen seventies. So that Folgers was, crystals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so yeah, dad passed a week ago. Definitely a car guy. One of the motivations for West of Tulsa. Yeah. Your grandfather, obviously, mm. Richard Keller was another big motivator for it. But um, so after he died and and within hours, we started going through the old photos and just reminiscing. And what do I come across? I come. I actually brought it. I came across a pristine bill of sale for his 1952 MGTD. Now he talked about this thing for years and years. We saw pictures of it, but this shows this shows he paid. What I just look at it seven hundred and sixty two dollars. Amazing. For this car in 1960, he bought it new. No, it was used. It was used, it was okay. used. Yeah. but still seven hundred bucks. Seven hundred bucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> An MG. Yeah. An MG. Yeah. What what condition was it in? Oh, it was in great condition. Wow. Yeah, I mean, the photos of it show it was in really good condition. Do you then, do you guys know what a TD is? What what is what's the TD denote? Is that like a special uh, you know, model you probably or have something? To, yeah, you have the TC TD oh. TF. Okay. And I don't, the TF, I only know the TF is different because the headlights are kind of built into the fender. But the TC Is it a chronological these, thing? Like, yeah. like, oh, so like yeah. a certain year Older they made a TC, to, to then the a TD. Right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Again, disclaimer, we're not car experts. So we no, know what we're, we're talking about. We're just, you know, We'd guessing. love if an MG expert would chime in on this and sure. educate yeah. us because, yeah, who, who knows MGs? I don't know MGs yeah. at all. Yeah. Either, yeah. And these are the really old, th these are the old... Really, I mean, the, the, the fenders that are separate. And, it's yeah, like what the they, professor the drove in Flubber, it. right? Yeah, Where Fred exactly. McMurray drove yeah, in yeah. Flubber or I something think so, like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 What? <laughs> so, I mean, it's so there's an interesting. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. It, there's kind of a stateliness to that car. There though, is yeah. a stateliness, right? yeah. You've never if heard of Flubber. Right. We've heard of it. I just don't remember the car. Is that a dolphin? Is that a dolphin? That's Flipper. That's. <laughs> no, no, it's a, Disney, it's, a, it's a very popular Flubber? Disney movie from the, when I was a kid. Flubber. I remember you guys were kids. I know that. Yeah. F L U B. He was a he was a was mad it a Don per Don Knotts. No, no, Fred because McMurray. Oh, Fred McMurray. Mad, yeah, mad, of course. Mad okay. professor who okay. invents something well, that you can put in your shoes and it makes the state team basketball be able to jump oh, and that win the game. Oh, that sounds vaguely it's a familiar. Disney thing. Yeah, sure. Black and white, black and white okay. movie. But he, I think he drove. Disney an MG. made black and white movies. Yeah, yeah. Bad. This is like this old. is like early sixties, <laughs> late fifties, maybe. Really? Okay. Yeah. I know nothing. I don't. You're learning you're something every time we chat. Young, I'm not even. I don't even think I was just young. I just don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> I just, maybe I had a sheltered child. Well, I don't know. Well, I'm really into obscure, but but I swear it was a mainstream movie. It okay. wasn't. It wasn't an obscure movie. And Kurt, I think it was Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, like one of his that first. Could be. Oh, he was like yeah. a teenager in it. Yeah, like he had to be young. Yeah. Yeah, he had a, a like. The computer wore tennis shoes and flubber. There was like a oh, whole yeah. string of them that made Kurt Russell the child star, like 18 years yeah, old. Right. And he came up and it's like, oh, that's why Kurt Russell's star today. Yeah. Mm. That's where he got his start. Yeah. Okay. His actually first appearance was with Elvis. He was in an Elvis movie as a small yeah. child. As a kid, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you know <laughs> wow. Flubber when I'm talking about Flubber? I, I, you ever see I, it? I remember it. Um, I can't say I remember the car, but I do remember the movie. I just remember he had some kind of little low sports car, and it reminds me of an MG. I don't know. Yeah. If it it might have be. been a Triumph or something. Or I don't know. Or a Morgan or something or, like or that. Or an Italian. Yeah. It might have been a Fiat or yeah. something. I don't we'll know. We'll have to Google but. it later. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you can uh, count on Google. Don't yeah. count on us. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but that MG that Dad always talked about, he bought it and then drove it out to Tarkio from Buffalo. Tar he went to Tarkio College in Missouri. So he drove the car out there, and the way he tells it, you know, the engine blew up or he hit a tree or something like that. My grandfather uh, drove out from Buffalo, fixed it on the side of the road, <laughs> got my dad going again, drove it back to... Drove it back to college. My grandfather went back to Buffalo. And that says so much about your grandfather, oh, yeah. too. What he kind was, of man he, he was. He could fix anything, yeah. my grandfather. Yeah, they were, they were amazing men. Yeah. And so when my gra dad graduated from college, he parked the MG in a barn mm -hmm. in Tarkio. And it was a buddy's barn, and he was planning on going back to get it, but that buddy was killed in a car crash mm -hmm. shortly after that. And my dad just left it in the barn, and many years went by, and I think it was probably in the 1990s, one day my dad calls me up and he goes, you're not going to believe this. I just got the Tarkio College newsletter, and on the cover is the president in a 1952 <gasps> MG TV. It was his car? Oh, boy. He goes, that's my car. Oh, oh my god. So gosh. how did he get it? Did he buy it from... Oh, I, who knows? And he never really went after... I mean, look, my dad had given it up for, what, 40 years? Yeah. So he's not going to come back and say, hey, wow. that's my car. Wow. But he knew he gave it up. Um 
But huh. whether that was his car or not, I don't know. He was pretty convinced it was. It looked just like well, it. Well, that, that kind of speaks to the Tony uh, Tony Banks story he told us, remember, about the, the hot rod that showed up like 30 years later. And it's like back then, I don't even know if they had VINs. And they oh, were yeah, just yeah. like yeah. cars were right. just more like, oh, I got a car. Here, yeah. have a car. You yeah. know, it wasn't like Oh, the magic, magic muffler yeah. car. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh. the magic muffler car. Right. I didn't realize that was the ending of it. Huh. Yeah, that was well. that. And I still to this day don't know. Now, I'll say this. When I found the receipt. For that car, the the fifty two MG, I was on the internet immediately trying to find <laughs> it because it has a serial number, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. the chassis number, and it has yeah. the engine number, and a lot of those have registries. And I did find the MG, the old MG, I think it's a TD TD registry, and uh, I, I went through it. And I didn't see the MG registered there, mm. but it doesn't mean somebody doesn't have it out mm-hmm. there. Yeah. It doesn't mean the president is still driving around. We need to make MG. a phone call, CJ. You'll find out for sure. Yeah. But if anybody's from Tarkio, Missouri, and they're listening to this and say, you see an old MG driving around Tarkio, Missouri, or that area, could be. Was it? We want to know. We want to know. Yeah. Not that yeah. it matters now. Was it burgundy? I forget the color. I don't even remember. Okay. I want to say it he was... He didn't talk much about the color of it, just the fact that he loved driving it. Yeah. In fact, in his office, I found a model of an old MGTD. Mm. So, I mean, it just shows you how much you love that car. Yeah. But he had a bunch of cars. A Hillman. You guys ever heard of a Hillman? I've heard of it. I don't know what he it is. Is that an English car? In, yeah, English car, but yeah. he had it in Buffalo. And he bought it probably early 50s, you know, just this boxy little thing that probably had 10 horsepower. Helmsman, but not Hillman. No. <laughs> and, and I have to say that they're not, I, I don't mean to offend anybody because I, I certainly am no expert, but they're not overly reliable, correct? Hillman? Mm-hmm. English, English, English cars. cars. <laughs> You're not it's offending a, anyone. Histori- okay, historically, be, they're not very reliable. Historically, they're not. And to be driving that in that kind of weather. Espe- be, especially back then. Yeah. The 50s, you know. Yeah. Wow. They always talked about the Hillman. Hmm. I don't know why. Maybe it was just so an, such an odd car to have. Yeah. Mm. Because, no, I mean, if it is British, I don't know. Sounds British. Not many but, people have yeah. them. Yeah. Even an MGTD back then. Yeah. He didn't have a, probably had, didn't have a lot of, people didn't have a lot of them. What was his daily when you, when you were in Buffalo? Like what, what was his typical daily driver? God, he, had, it wasn't the MG, a, right? No, 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 no. That's he, like a weekend yeah, car. Yeah. No, I mean, like he, he always had pretty cool cars. I, th- <laughs> I will say this, his one weak moment, he went through a phase where he was being too practical, if you will. Mm-hmm. And he bought, a, what would it be a 1981 Chevy Chevette? Oh, 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 that was a bad car. Bad car. Bad That's era. the year I graduated yeah. from high school. I know yeah. that car. That's a bad car. Yeah, he had. He bought one of those. I think Chevy. Chevy wants a memory hole that yeah. era. Oh, that's a horrible car. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's Chevy's Pinto, the Chevette. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd say that's worse than a Pinto. I, I Pintos think you, are actually kind of cool you, now. So well, yeah, they come Chevette back. Will ever be now. cool? Yeah, Chevette. Other than that moment of weakness, he really, really had some pretty cool cars. So. Yeah. Volkswagens in, yeah. in the 60s when everybody was behind the Volkswagens. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Helmut, I got a chance to meet your dad uh, not too long ago. And it was he's he's an interesting character because uh, it, <laughs> it took him like, what, four seconds before he started laying into you <laughs> about stories, <laughs> stories that, you know, uh, about... You know, you as a supposed punk, secrets that punk, you know, punk kid or something yeah, like that. Punk or he was a punk. punk. <laughs> and he, he tells me and Helm, he's just like, it's like, yeah, if you want to hear any other stories, I got a ton of them about CJ. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> let's let's hear them. We'd like well, to hear them. I was them the all. troubled child. There's no doubt about it. I was definitely the troubled child. <laughs> well, you cleaned up nicely, I think. Oh, thank you. Well, it's now 50 years removed. You learned <laughs> so. from all getting kicked out of high school and all the things that you went through, right? Oh, CJ? yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Kicked out of high school. I've never heard him drop so many de- F bombs. Damn. I bet. <laughs> oh my I bet. gosh. Why not? You yeah. did what? Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> when you made it onto TV, like, you know, network TV or whatever, doing the news and stuff like that, did he, did it change at all? Did he, did he was like, oh, it was all worth it, you know, because. Well, he never he, said that. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't a man to heap praise. Yeah. He wasn't. Although I, I feel like he did more so on the grandkids. Yeah. You know? Well, and here's the thing. He would he would say it to somebody else. He wouldn't always yeah. just say it to me, but he would say it to right, others. Because right. parents, people would always come up to me and say, oh my gosh, he's so proud of you. Yes. And he was so, and you could tell yeah, he was you so could tell. proud of you. Yeah. He now, now, would he sit there and gush over me? Yeah. No, no. He had that's, a very gruff exterior. Yeah. Well, that's it, that greatest it, generation thing too. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, that's just how they were. And it's like most of the guys, when they came back from the war, they wouldn't talk about mm, the war that's because right. that's just not, we, we want to get on with the life, like forget the war. That's right. right. So, so yeah. I think that kind of bled into the sort of family dynamics because mm-hmm. that story you're telling 
I, I've heard that a hundred times from other yeah. guys yeah. our age, and it's like, yeah, my dad was never overly effusive with that sort of thing. Yeah, effusive. Yeah, that's my that's my ten dollar Dan. That's my ten dollar word. Man, I was thinking, <laughs> is, he, is he calling me a bad name or something? Yeah, you I'm gonna take, I'm a, I'm gonna take <laughs> offense to that. <laughs> you know, effusive. I know, I know. I'm joking. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, you know, he was a good guy, car guy. Yeah. And it's sad to see him go. But the whole point of this is why we created all of this was yes. because we want to preserve the legacies. And yeah. luckily with my dad, I did a lot of that. Yeah. I was able to have a lot of discussions. He yeah. watched the show, loved the show, yeah. loved the idea behind the show. Yeah. He would always call me up and go, oh, you guys were funny with this. And, da, 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 da. and he so, was in the studio here, which is awesome. And he was here and he, he got, he to, got see the to see studio. your workplace here, yeah. which oh, is very great. cool. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. 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 Got to see the vision for West of Tulsa, that's which right. is yeah, yeah, which yeah. is a lot of people don't get that with their parents. You know, that's yeah. cool. I'd say between him and Richard Keller, you know, um, you know obviously <clears throat> he was the one that started the West of Tulsa Museum, but that is literally why we're doing this. Literally, yeah. I mean, to capture these stories. Preserve the legacy. Preserve right? the legacy, yeah. Yeah. You know, because that's, at the end of the day, when everybody's gone, that's all we have, right? Is right. this memory, you know, and when those memories, they'll, they'll live forever so long as the memory lives forever, right? Maybe that's what gets people to contact us and tell their stories. You know, do you have somebody out there like my dad or or like Beth's grandfather, somebody who influenced you or is is yeah. is influencing sure. you right now yeah. for sure and want to yeah. document maybe, it before they go no maybe Listen. you're onto something because maybe people don't come out and want to share a story or some story because they think that that story about somebody else or their father or their grandfather or mother or whatever um doesn't isn't rel relevant to them but it is it is it is mm -hmm. i mean most of the stories that we i mean he, we've heard a uh, previous guest steve feist talk about all these people that he knew that he learned from that, even longer, including his dad, and he's telling and his uh, grandfather and grandmother who had this amazing collection of cars. Yeah, he's talking about them. He's like, that's probably the only way that they're going to stay alive is through this conversation that he's yeah. having with people. So yeah. maybe that's you're right. Maybe we, we encourage people to share the story about your grandparents or your father or mother or brother, sister, whatever, about their cars. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody influenced you to get into the the hobby or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So who was it? Was it a relative? I mean, I know I grew up listening to my grandfather talk about all the cars he owned, my dad, mm -hmm. and obviously it leached into me and my brother. Yeah. My bro In fact, that was one of the other things. So I'm going through all these photos. I find that receipt for the MG. Then I've opened up another folder that my dad had, and it's the photo of a 1970 Chevelle. No, my, my brother's yes. car. There's a cool car. Yes. Re All right. but, so it's actually, we called it the Chevelle, but it was really a 70 Malibu that was converted to Michelle's or the Chevelle standard. So it was a three, originally came with a 307. <clears throat> and then we, Greg, took out the 307 and went to, well, how, it was his girlfriend's friend's father was the head mechanic for Scotty Brayton Racing, Indy Racing. Does anybody remember no. Scotty Brayton? No. I don't so this would have been one. in the 80s. But Greg pulls up in this in this Chevy Malibu, <clears throat> and the guy says, hey, save up a few bucks and bring it back, and I'll blow up this motor. I'll take out the 307. I'll put it in the 350, and I'll mm. add a bunch of muscle to it. So Greg does. And he ends up <laughs> with this beautiful car. He painted a burgundy metallic. Center line rims, big old honking tires in the back. You know, every kid's dream in 1980. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, find, the, find this photo. I take a picture of it, text it to my brother, and he's like, oh, my God. I don't have a photo of it. Oh, I've never had a photo oh, of that. That's yeah. awesome. I said, well, you do now. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I found that's this awesome. photo. So I'm saving it for him. Oh. I'll, I'll give it to Greg. So but, where's the car now? Did you do your research? Oh, my Greg's going to kill me for even saying this. But so Greg, <laughs> something happened to the car. Couldn't get it started. Mm -hmm. And it sat there for a while. And Greg's like got frustrated with it. Boy, he's going to give me hell for even telling the story because I know it still bothers him. <laughs> but he, he parked it and then decided, oh, I'm going to get rid of it. So he lists it, for, lists it for sale, sells it. The guy calls him up like hours later and goes, oh, guess what? The only thing that was wrong with it was a ground wire. Oh, no. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, brutal. Oh, yeah. no. And did Greg say, I want it back? We have. Oh, I'm know, sure. I'm sure in his head remorse. he was like, oh, Damn. <laughs> but it's too late. I mean, well, you that's sold what, the thing, That's right? what being young is for. You, is, you make stupid decisions lessons, when you're yeah. young. But you hard know what? Lessons. I think you fight for something you love. You should have called that guy back and said, you know what? I know <laughs> I just saw. Yes, you got, cry. You do whatever you have to money. do. Double, double the that's price. Right. Double the price. You can that's have right. it back. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, probably. Yeah. 
Because no, some, some car buyers have big hearts, I've learned, talking true, to all these wonderful true. men. It's true. Yeah. There are some cool well, people. Well, it's too late now. It's, that was, that <laughs> it was, was decades ago. <laughs> 35 years ago. But And yeah. if you want that Aero Chevelle now, they're what, about 100 grand for a wow. nice one, right? Well, the real ones, yeah. yeah. This was, again, it was a, a Malibu conversion, conversion right. if you will. But um, that thing rocked. They had the cam. Yeah. You know, it was one of those cars, you know. <laughs> best looking at me like, really? <laughs> best, best doing that <laughs> yeah. men and car thing. Like, yeah, that, that's those huh? are not yeah, my I favorite. A, do you want me to do the sound effect no, again? No, please don't. <laughs> I want you to do a rotary now. Do you want me to do a peel out? No. No, okay, all right. You notice when Beth tells her Volkswagen story, she doesn't imitate the sound of her Volkswagen. <laughs> <No. engine. laughs> and I have, I have a story yeah. about my dad, what he went through with his car, what he did with it, which, and I would, as a kid, I was mortified. And my dad had really cool Jeeps, Toyota Land Cruisers and Jeeps. Oh, yeah. And um, he went through a phase where he had this blazer and it was burnt orange with the white, top and it had this weird funky texture on it and he put you guys know what it is whatever with the muffler oh glass pack we yeah. talked about glass packs, I, yeah. I think we talked about this on yeah. this I think a we did. long time yeah. ago yeah. it was mortifying <laughs> yeah. and i could hear him two blocks away coming home like oh wake my up God. the whole neighborhood was, right oh, you're a grown man why do you need to do that to your car you have children because it's cool yeah because it's cool <laughs> okay i thought i thought otherwise. what did it sound like i don't want to talk about it <laughs> <laughs> i, I better push my it. car out of the parking lot <laughs> yeah yeah but I mean, you know what your car came that way you were you're not my dad so it's okay <laughs> i did i did modify it a little bit but <laughs> so so tell me is it is, is it just kind of it's visceral it's a rumble you feel it oh yeah you're driving is that yes, what it's about absolutely i mean feel but it's it in the chest it's, right it's yeah. You don't do it for that. That's just a benefit, but you do it for the performance, obviously, right. is, the, mm. yeah, is the main reason. <laughs> Actually, I, it's funny because I have a similar story to what your brother, well, not 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 as bad. Uh, sorry, Greg. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so my RX-7, my 93 Mazda RX-7, um, I bought it as a car that I was going to drive in between building another car, my race car, uh, which it turned out to be a complete nightmare. My buddy Greg's listening to this right now probably and it's going, yeah, it's a nightmare because he's the one that works on it mostly. And um, we were just going to do a few things to it and get the running and driving, but it, it's turned out to be like this big, big, big problem. And we just start un pulling the, the thread of that sweater. And long story short, we had ended up replacing everything on the car. And... We replaced a brand, the whole wiring harness. We replaced it with a brand new wiring harness from a very reputable guy. Mm -hmm. Well, ever since we put that harness in, we've had nothing but electrical problems. So we just kind of chasing this stuff down. Mm -hmm. And um, we were working on stuff. We were working with the tuner remotely. He's helping us put it all together, trying to figure out what the problem was. And... Um, we just gave up. We, just, I mean, we checked everything. We just like everything. We just like we everything makes sense. The car wasn't starting up, wasn't running right, whatever. And then um, a, my buddy started was like, "Well, let's pull the injectors out and let's test it again." Which I had replaced them already twice. And we pull out, and he goes, "Hey, this clip looks funny." So we pull out the clip, and it's a it's called an EV6 connector. It's what it plugs into the injector from the wiring harness, and the um, pigtail on it. The wires are going into it. Weren't seating correctly so we he looks over and says there, there was a casting in the injector that was wrong hmm. and it was preventing the clip from touching the injector and making oh contact gosh. with the injector we're like no way Something so we, so tiny yeah it was like a little pla <laughs> it's a plastic cage basically yep, it's yep. a locking feature right we ripped the we ripped it out stuffed it in car fired right up Wow. wow, just that little tiny thing. Four years we were chasing this problem. Oh. Well, granted, off and on because we we can't can't work on it all the time. But oh jeez, there's been many times thinking I'm questioning my life, going, "What am I doing with this car? I'm a, gro <laughs> I'm a grown ass man." But but the second that thing fired up, and we recorded it too, I put it on my Instagram. We're we like, were, "Oh, I was." It was the weirdest feeling. I was pissed off of what happened for the last four years, and so excited. Yeah. So excited. I share the video with my wife. And <laughs> what is she? The first thing she says, why does it sound like that? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds broken. Oh, <laughs> man. And anybody who knows anything about rotaries or has her, ever heard oh, of rotary, they have yeah, a yeah. very unique sound, which is why rotary guys like them. Right. Do you want, do you want to do an imitation? Of <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the slang is brap, brap, brap. It does a brap, brap, brap yeah. sound. Brap, that's brap. the brap. And that's what most rotary guys want. That's what's very unique to the rotary. And I live for that. 
the second that car fired, I had a newfound like love for, for my car. <laughs> and now I'm like, I'm like jonesing to get it driving now because now it runs properly. So it's just one of those things that you, Beth, you're saying, like, my, my, what my dad to, did to the car car was atrocious it was like i'm sure my wife thinks that about what i'm, what I'm doing with my rotary <laughs> but it's music to my ears i hear it all the time on the 101 and the 405 when we're going to go see family and aging parents you know you see, hear hear a lot of those cars oh yeah what's oh, yeah. what's yeah. that uh what's the race car that mazda race car that's famous the the 787 yeah yeah that thing sounds incredible yeah, well there's a couple I've there's never a couple of mazda race cars iconic but the, the green and orange one that you've seen yeah that's the one that, and that sounds that's a four rotor uh, most Streetcars are two rotor, um, but it is an amazing. It's a very. There's nothing like it. Yeah, nothing like yeah. it. Is it usually when it's slowing down or speeding up that you hear it, or is oh, it all the time? It's all the time. Both. On, yeah. on rotaries, it's all the time. It's yeah. the idle. It's the rev. It's the down. It's all that, and they all have unique sounds. There's there's no an engine like it. This is such a unique sound. I think we should dedicate an entire show to the sounds of cars. Oh, that'd be oh cool. awesome. I really do. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really cool. I'd be all for that. I'd be all for it. But you'd have I, to do the imitation. You'd have to. <laughs> I can't do the decide sound if I like the sound of that Mazda or the Paganis. The Paganis oh, yeah. sound incredible. The Paganis yeah. sound pretty cool. Mercedes V12, that thing. But is, see, yeah. here's the thing. That, like, um, going all the way from like, and I know Alex will like, does he know the uh, a Fox Body 5.0? Oh, yeah. With a nice cam in it. Great you know, sound. Be great sound. Um, or an LS with a chop or, yeah. you know, Steve Ice, uh, uh, a rap motor, big, big block Chevy with a nice heavy cam on it. You know, um, they all have great, unique sounds. For Even sure. Even an old flathead Ford. You get yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 old school uh -huh, that rumble. flathead. The yes. VW guys, yeah. the bug guys, they, the VW guys, they yeah. love that. I, I mean, I can't stand it, but I, I could appreciate it because it's a very unique sound right. to a VW. My yeah. 69 GTO had a Ram Air cam in it and I, and I drove it around town with just the headers, open, open headers around town. And everybody was just like, oh my gosh, what is this race yeah, car? Sound. Yeah. But it was so fun. It yeah. was just so fun to do it. Well, Helm, yeah. and, and Helm, you know, and you got to experience this at the uh, Death Valley Wagon Tour with Blue Nelson. Um, the turbo diesel Mercedes sound is unique. There's nothing it like yeah. it. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. super right. unique. Yeah. Yeah. Five you know. cylinder diesel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I love the idea of doing a show where we're talking about the sounds sound. and play that, clips from that. That would be awesome. Or, hey, could you guess what that sound is? Yes. I, I love it. That is. I love it. That's a, that's a good so, show. That's actually, a great show. I want to do a poll on our Instagram. I was like, what is the best sounding engine to you? I love it. I and love the, it. The thing about that is, you can, everybody's going to have a different opinion. Yeah, so of course. That's the best part about it. So you can hear all these mm -hmm. different opinions. All you can hear all these different cars. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, I, I have, have a theory, that. Gabe, because you know I grew up racing motocross. So I was in the first uh, Suzuki RM125 era, which was like when the first kind of high performance motocross bikes came out. And my race bikes, they had a bandwidth, a power band of like nothing. Mm -hmm. And it was all at like 10 to 12,000 RPMs and up. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm attracted to the Pagani and the, the, and the Mazda because it's high. Yeah, It just sounds like a hurt, you know, like a hive of angry bees. Yeah. It's just this, mm -hmm. You can hear yeah. it from like yes. miles away. Yes. Yeah. And and I appreciate like the big, I know what a big block sounds like, like revved up or oh, a drag yeah. car, you know, at the, at the drag strip. Yes. And that sounds awesome too. But there's just something about that. It's almost like the F1. The yeah. 90s era F1 cars that just, you know, 20,000 RPMs. I, that's, I think, you know, Beth, you're saying something visceral. It is, we say this all the time, it is a vis visceral thing. It has to be. There is nothing else like yeah. it. Mm -hmm. That's why the EVs won't get that kind of, because, the, yes, they have the performance. You know, I, I see a meme all the time on the internet about how you can cook a steak in a microwave, but why? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like right. you, you could cook it way faster, but why? You right, know? right. And yeah, and EVs will do, you know, zero to 60 in two seconds yeah. without blinking. And that's great. But There's that's nothing not, visceral. They're no, an appliance. But you know what? I, 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 I understand what you're saying, but in part of that I disagree with because we have a coworker who has a Fisker. Yeah. And when he starts it up, I mean, it's it, it sounds like kind of what you were describing about the Mercedes. That really? I, and I don't know. Well, and I may be way, way wrong because I don't know what this Mercedes <laughs> sounds like that you're talking about. But it is kind of this such a high techno sound, mm -hmm. like you're being beamed up somewhere. It's just a very... <laughs> and I, I mean, you kind of it. are actually beamed yeah, up. Really. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But it's a cool sound and nothing else makes no, that and, sound. And, and there's there are guys, there are guys hot... We want to call them hot rodders or not. There are guys that soup up and trick out their EVs. And I think it's cool. I think it's cool because in their own respect, do I, would I get into that? No. 
but you wouldn't even get into it. No, I mean, get into it. Like you wouldn't in, get into in, it. involved, but you that. would get inside yeah. the oh, yeah, car. For sure. Oh, but, I, mean, <laughs> hey, I wouldn't get in there. Power, <laughs> power is power to me. How, you know, acceleration is acceleration to me, but the sound, the smell, yeah. those are yeah. all huge, yes. huge for sure. factors. Yep. 100%. You know? yeah. So, you know, it's not just, it's, it's, Almost the style of it instead of like the actual literally getting to A to B, you know? Right. Yep. So actually, I'm not sure, but and you can answer this question, but I think that's one of the ways that I was able to sell the 911 to Beth. The sound? Well, the sound of it, because yeah. it, remember you at first, you were like, oh, it's not it's not practical. We shouldn't consider the 911. We, we should get a used Honda or whatever you, was you were saying. And then you went with me down to- I didn't the, say a used Honda, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you had the look in your eye. Uh, but that Honda You got look. into the car. She drove around the, in the Porsche, the 911. And I said, okay, wind it up. So she winds it up. I said, now let go, let off the gas. And you, you hear that little where it backs off. Mm -hmm. I think that's what sold it. Mm. Well, and I am I am about smell. I love the smell of cars and certain specific oh, yeah, yeah. cars. And that car felt like we had driven it our whole lives. Like it just fit yeah. like a glove. It just did. <laughs> well, we talked about that with Craig when Craig was yeah. here uh, about the smell. Like he said, the English leather smells yes. different than the Italian yes. leather. You're talking about the interior smell because exterior smells a lot well, different. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Different, that's sure. a different show. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, if I bring my I will bring it over here but I don't think you're gonna like the smell of my car I love it but I don't think you'll like it is it real much. exhausty is it what is oh it's it, all exhaust yeah <laughs> <laughs> all exhaust like 61, all the time. Corvair, my 61 Corvair yeah, yeah. it fills well, up the neighborhood hey, yeah. to me the best smell is race gas the race yeah. gas smell yeah. oh my god when it's burning it is the best yeah <laughs> it's it's like perfume it does have a smell <laughs> like napalm yeah. in the morning uh, is that oh. it? it's definitely napalm yeah. I mean when I actually it's funny when you say that Every time I do smell race gas, it reminds me of when I was much younger. We would go to the racetrack early in the morning. That's the only time I'd wake up early in the morning is to go to the track and everybody's starting up, warming up their engines, tuning them up to get, you know, ready to race. And you just that smell super oh, early in the morning. It's, a, it's and like a, cacophony, a cacophony of smells. Oh, dude. It's, if that can be. A what? A cacophony. A cacophony. You know, like the orchestra, and you hear all the different instruments, and they're, Gabe, they're getting warmed up. Cacophony. Okay. Cacophony. A cacophony. A, a, yeah, a cacophony. That's sounds a great like, word. So, that sounds yeah. like but a drink is, helmet order at the coffee shop. This is obviously more of a, a, a smell, not the sound. Cacophony. A cacophony. It's a great I want word. a shirt that says cacophony. It's a great word. We are raising people's vocabulary. Yes, we're, we're, <laughs> yes. we're a highbrow we, show. We have an, we have an yes, effusive we cacophony of vocabulary here, right? Probably getting people going, what the are they talking about? Yeah. <laughs> People we're, like look open a dictionary. We're alienating trying to all the out. car guys. Are just, what no, are these, what are these they, idiots they know, talking about? They know. You know. I yes. In, you'll, next <laughs> time, Cacophony. next just time you, yes, you hear it and you see it, you're gonna go. That's what it is. Yes. I, I'm gonna I use it, that at I the next it. cars and coffee. This is a cacophony of cars. Yes, yeah. cars, yes. And, cars like, and cacophony. It will be, and they're all starting up, and you can hear them. It's they're the best. Like, that guy, that guy's a little slow. He's making up words now. I don't know. So, you know. So going back to people listening to the show and, and hearing these stories and stuff like that, uh, my cousin sent us a note, and I think I shared it with you guys. It was interesting because my cousin, I didn't think he'd be interested in like m the majority of our shows. He's, you know, but he said that- We don't uh, think a lot of people would be interested in the majority of our shows. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're just, <laughs> we're just doing this because we like talking to doing each other. Doing it because right. we can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that he's finding- himself more interested in the stories and learning about people. And I think that's the thing that transcends what kind of car what kind of thing you're yeah. into. It's about the people and you don't have to be into cars. I mean, I'm not into international harvesters, but our show this week that we put out yeah. about the harvester with Dan Hayes. Dan and, was a real uh, interesting Binder guy. Boneyard. Real interesting guy. I mean, we even talked about it. It's like we didn't. We thought it was his his name or binder, yeah. like a folder, like binder. No, it was a corn binder. I'm like, dude, that's so yeah. cool. Yes. Yeah. Going back to the history of why it was so popular because the war, you know, and yeah. the machinery, the the industrial area, whatever, era, whatever you want to call that. I was like, this is really, really cool. It's fascinating, and I wasn't. Even, I'm not even into that stuff, and that's the part where I feel like. More people came out of the woodworks and shared these kinds of oh, stories. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna we'll know and learn so much more about not just cars but people. Well, and he's up in, of, he's up in Oregon too, which is just a completely different vibe than Southern California. Yeah. He's talking about farming in Eastern Oregon and like the, the you know how the binding machine would bind up hay bales or corn or whatever. And mm -hmm. that's like he that's posted on so, something on like cool. social media this morning where they're in snow. Oh, yeah. oh wow! Did you see that? Did you see Snow that? in June? Yeah. Wow. I, I don't. I, I'm guessing it was. 
it's current. Wow. I don't think it's an old photo, but who knows? But yeah, he's he's got a great story. And, the, and when I was listening to it the second time, and he talked about being homeless mm-hmm. and living yeah. in it, and then, you know, yeah. picking up the pieces of his life oh, and... Wow. Yeah, pretty powerful stuff. Now I'm yeah. looking back on all the shows we've done, and it's like look at look at the uh, look at the spread of people we've had on here, and the spread of stories. It's like I'm really proud of us because we've we've gone from dating to international harvester to <laughs> to Range Rovers to you know we're yeah. we're we're literally all over the map. I but mean, it, but all connected through some kind of vehicle or some kind people of and mm-hmm. people you know, and stories, people and stories. Right. And that's that's what I find so unique about a car, a car connects so many people whether you're into them or it not does. Right. it does you know it's, it's like that's our plug for cars usa you know like it, you know it's, it it's everywhere yeah you know uh, there's a guy i think you saw on our um instagram in sweden he has a harvester that he's building or whatever and he's like i'll never be able to bring it to the the harvester museum that dan's oh, to build yeah, dan yeah. wants to build yeah but i was like dude I would love to hear your story about you being in Sweden and building a IH, you know, or IHC. IHC um, was it a pickup? Like a, a I don't pickup? know if it was a scout or whatever, but he's building okay. something that he's. Well, I missed whatever. that one. So he's in Sweden. Yeah, and he saw it. Yeah, I, I messaged him. I was or responded to him. I was like, "Hey, dude, if you ever come out here, just we want to hear your story." Oh, I think yeah. we need to take the show to Sweden. Well, yeah. I, I can get with can that. Can we go to Hawaii first? <laughs> can we go to Hawaii? I need to go to Hawaii. You need soon. to go to Hawaii first. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What's Hawaiian car culture? <sighs> It's awesome, actually. Well, we we know drifting came via Hawaii. We oh, know that did? firsthand. Yeah. Really? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You want to clarify that because you're going to get a lot of guys oh, saying yeah. you're talking wrong because <laughs> well, drifting did not come what, from, Hawaii, what, from Hawaii. No, 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 no. It came to the United States via Hawaii because the Japanese culture in Hawaii. Oh, they were doing drifting before we had our first meets yeah, over yeah. here. That's, that's, what so guy, I'm saying that's, that's just, what the guys told me when we interviewed him. I know. You know? I know. No, I know. That, but I'm saying we we'll clarify this because there will be some people. I know they're already going to say it now because we, you know, we're talking about this is that yeah. we've got it all wrong or whatever. Well, true. Uh, yeah, but yeah. This is what we were told, yes, that um, the drifting scene in Japan has been going on forever. In 2003, we were told this. Too. Yeah, in 2003, we were told yeah. this when we were doing a documentary, a drifting documentary, that the drifting came to the mainland through Hawaii because the Japanese that came from Japan to Hawaii were already kind of doing that. You so, know, hey, let's there. do a drift thing here yeah. in Hawaii. And, cool. And in Hawaii, the car culture is kind of like, I want to call them like Asian rednecks. <laughs> because oh, okay. no, I, I mean I know that sounds terrible but that, I mean there are like kind of Asian like this like grassroots like let's just get it done they have a unique yeah. culture that's a mix of Japanese and like American and mm. Hawaiian too yeah yeah um, it's really really cool it's very unique mm. you know to Japan it's that's their it, that's their flair and I think it's cool because they like hot rods in Hawaii oh, too yeah, don't they, they like hot rods are American irons big only, in Hawaii there's only right? one drag strip in Hawaii that's I think that's on the island of yeah. Maui yeah but Everybody on the islands are into drag racing or drifting or some kind of mm-hmm. cult. car culture. Is yeah, we got to go in there. Oh, yeah. Wow, we got to go there. That's my that's yeah. my plug for let's go, us going okay. to Hawaii. Let's go to Hawaii. All right, All right. we, we need to be up. educated by the Hawaiians about Hawaiian car culture. That's what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. Then I need, Sweden, I need okay. To, yeah, Hawaii then Sweden. We'll just take a flight from <laughs> little, little Very detour. To do. Little detour okay. there. About right. yeah. You're speaking of hot rodding, so we got a big event coming up. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now this will air before. Yeah, this show this we're doing right show now. will air before we this'll, tape it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. Will air so, next th- week. so we're, this weekend we're going to be uh, shooting um, an uh, an episode called the uh, was it what? Central Coast Racing Central Coast calling. Racing. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the help of Tony Baker and Dana Newquist. Yep. Um, who's who's really organizing all this? We've got a panel of 10, 11 guys and going up and going up, <laughs> which is d- driving Dan crazy. I'm told the legends of hot rodding is they what are. I'm told. Yeah, at least in the Central Coast. Yeah, and. Um, um, we have some some big big hitters are coming, and well, the cool thing about it is that all these guys are going to be in the same place at the same time, um, talking all these stories and sharing all their stories. And it this could very well be the last time this they ever do this. We're we're literally saying history will be made on For Saturday sure. night. Yeah. It it will because you will never have this collection of guys no. together again, and many of them are of advanced age yeah. and will be leaving us probably. So. Yeah, that's really the fact. And, and some of the people that we were originally, uh, Dana, originally were going to have on this have already passed. So yeah, th- so that is true. You know, yeah. Well, the oldest, I believe, is Lee Hammock, and he's post World War II. When Ninety four, I think. Someone yeah, told something me, right? like that. Ninety four. Yeah. yeah. So these guys are these guys were racing in the forties, fifties, sixties, and once some of them are still gone, racing today. 
That's wow. awesome. And once they're great. gone, the stories yeah, are gone, that's as right. we know. I mean, that's we've right. got Tony, who, thank goodness, has his book and is writing about this stuff. Yeah. But, but, you know, it's a very unique thing. Like racing on the Central Coast is a huge thing, as we discover when we had Tony on. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially in Santa Barbara. We have guys that uh, came from the airport racing, the Santa Barbara airport racing, yep. um, the Thunder Bowl, um, <clears throat> and uh, just hot riding in general um, that are all going to be on this panel just sharing all these stories from back in the day. And I'm pretty I'm sure there's yeah. going to be all kinds of things that people didn't know yeah. that are going to come out. And uh, I'm I'm excited for it. It's going to be really, really cool. I'm excited too because we're going to set this up as like a podcast. It's going to be a massive podcast. Dude. Yeah. So we're going to record this. Um, we're going to shoot it and record it. Um, but uh, how we package it, we're not sure yet. But um, we're going to capture all of it and uh, share it, preserve it and preserve it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully we'll be able to do this more regularly because we feel like, you know, we're killing, uh, killing. Wow. We're bad we're, choice of words. Kid. Yeah. Yeah. Bad we're, we're, words. we're dotting a lot of I's and crossing a lot of T's <laughs> in one, better. in one day. Yeah. Yes. That's it. So, um, and, and, um, Dana's bringing a couple cars out and a bike right. or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, get everybody in the mood. Is yeah. What it's yeah. So it's going to be really cool. It's going to be, um, up in Santa Barbara. And uh, we're gonna, we'll post some stuff on the socials, um, you know, with updates. But it, it'll be a little while before we release it. And you already posted a photo of the empty seats in the auditorium where we're gonna hold this. Yeah, yeah, we're expecting. There's a preview, right? Like yeah, we're, we're slated for 200 people to show up, but it sounds like there could be more because Dana invited everybody. Yeah. He yeah. sets the vibe. He yeah. really does. Yeah. He's yeah. so good at that. Yeah, which is amazing because we have not promoted this on no. the internet at all. It's all been word of mouth. So. It'll be pretty interesting. Well, part of it is we're afraid if we start advertising, yeah. we're going to end up with 1,000 people yeah. and we have we a max of 250. 250, right, right. Yeah, yeah. 250 yeah. in the room, so yeah. 1,000 people So a very came. exclusive event, so. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking, we're looking forward to this. This will be really, really cool, getting his, all these stories out in one one evening and um, just documenting this stuff. And in some form or fashion, we're going to be posting that entire show on our YouTube channel, yeah. so you'll be able to watch it even if, even if you can't get in. Yeah. So I'm excited. It's going to be yeah. a fun night. No, I, it's going to be, be epic. Night. I, I would say epic is not an inappropriate word no, to I use here. So. It's like... I mean, I'm getting calls from people saying, hey, I hear you doing something on Saturday night with, with all the legends. And I'm like, yeah, you know, word yeah. is spreading. Yeah. 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 And That's I'm awesome. not saying anything to anybody. Not, I mean, not intentionally trying to keep it secret. It's just, yeah. you know... Yeah, well, it's the second we spreading. Sp- you know, put it out there publicly, people are going to be like, hey, how can we get in? I'm like, ah, I don't know if you can. You yeah. Know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Are there currently spots available at this moment? Well, we won't know till the day of. Ticket ticket sales <laughs> at the, the door, of. I believe. Yeah, yeah. Right? Ticket oh, sales oh, at the oh door. ticket sales yeah. at the door. But, yeah. okay. but it sounds like from what Dana's saying is that um, everybody that he's talked to has already committed to coming, and he's thinking that it might be over capacity. So yeah. the fire marshal might have well, a few words with us. Are they allowing standing room only on no, his own? No, no. They're really That's not. The they're being very no. strict about it. Okay. Yeah. People probably will be turned away if we go over 250. We it's could just... open the door so people could stand outside <clears> and listen in. Maybe, maybe. I've, I've maybe, been to events maybe. there where that has happened. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. How maybe, about a monitor in the parking it. lot or something? Yeah. yeah. We we do have a good PA system, so we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. It's, it's going to be an overflow interesting. audience. That'd be kind of fun, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. One, one speaker yeah. outside. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be that or 20 people show up. Either way, <laughs> it'll make, right. we'll make it work. Yeah. It'll be all relatives, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, if yeah, you watch yeah. the Tony Baker episode of our show and and or, and or bought his book, you will want to check this out because it's yeah. a lot of the same people and the same pictures, yeah. and it's it's pretty epic. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that that'll be really really cool. And there are yeah. a couple surprises we have built in. I'm not going to give it away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't be a surprise. But we got right. surprises. Right built yeah. into the show that I think everybody's going to be interested in. Yeah, and it, it you know really it's funny. I have been commuting lately down to Orange County and I was at a uh has to remain unnamed Japanese car manufacturer's headquarters mm-hmm. past 3 days and uh, I was driving past House of Imports on the 5 there mm-hmm. or the 55 whatever it's the 5 I think and I was just like this I I would love to do something down there with those guys. That's like it's I don't know if you ever seen. Have you ever seen House of Imports, Beth? You know what I we're talking about. I have seen it, but I don't. I've never. It's it's like a city. It's like a yeah. Mercedes dealership that goes on for like a mile down the freeway. It's crazy. <laughs> yes. I'm like, this is a car dealership, yeah. really? <laughs> well, we o- oddly enough, we are going to be covering the Hose event that he's doing there. Uh, Hodel, um, uh, they're going to be they're doing a Mercedes 
um, cars and coffee. Oh, it's, cool! It, it, that's on. That's coming this uh, Sunday. So this weekend, right? Uh, which it, by the time you hear this show, um, it'll have already passed. Mm-hmm. But you said it's a hose event. Ho, ho is his name. <laughs> ho Dow is his name. Sorry, Beth. Okay. Remember, I'm sorry. Remember the wagon show, Beth? <laughs> yes. Remember those? He, it was him and his wife had wagons. Mercedes. Oh, yes, yes, that's yes, ho. Yes. Ho. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, ho. My my apologies. <laughs> yeah. See now she uh, went there. She went. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, ho. Hose putting on this event, um, and it's going to be massive. Uh, I think they're going to sell out of because you have to reserve your spot uh, oh. for the Mercedes side of it. Um, it's open to everybody, but the can reserves... the public just come and oh, check yeah, it yeah, out? Yeah, it's oh, open okay. to everybody, and and other people can you can bring other cars and stuff, but the uh, the spots are reserved for Mercedes because gotcha. it's a Mercedes, it's a Mercedes dealership, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. But um, it should be pretty. It was big last year, so it'll be big this year. So we'll we'll be down there. Um, I no sleep. On no sleep because it'll be the day after. Yeah, us doing yeah. We, we kind of overcommitted that weekend, didn't we? We did, but you know, right. it, these are once in a lifetime op- types of op- opportunities. So we're at least once. That's what happens when you become ultra famous. You did you, yeah. you, you kind of overbook yourself. Well, we were almost famous. <laughs> we would definitely <laughs> like to do more events like this. Legends of Hot Rods. I yeah. mean, this this is really kind of why yeah. West of Tulsa exists, not just to do a podcast. Like yeah. the podcast is sort of our home base. But we would like to be the production company that is doing the coolest auto-centric, story-centric car programming. Yeah. For sure. I'll remind him of that when he's freaking out on Saturday because <laughs> and two I'm going, cables oh won't fit together. Eight, eight cameras and 12 mics. And, oh, yeah, it's going to be pretty crazy. And a partridge in a pear tree. It's going to be pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. The other thing we want to talk about is we are working on a top-secret project. We are. You want to talk about that? Well, if we talk about it, it won't be top secret. No, without but... giving up the top secret well, part of it. We'll talk we can... about it in like generalities and really vague. Yeah, exactly. And then oh, okay. people will be like, okay. wow, way to be vague guy. Okay. No, what we're doing is we're trying to put together a tool right now that will help people tell their story um, or tell a story um, about their car or someone's car um, and be able to share it and preserve it for a very long time. Um, so we've been working on this for quite a bit, actually, um, before we even started, started this show. Mm-hmm. And, um, we're hoping that we can, uh, Lisa, I don't know if we're going to release it this year. Maybe, maybe we'll release it this maybe. year, Maybe, but uh, we're doing some beta testing right now. And, um, hopefully it, it I, th- I think it'll be, it'll hit the mark cause there's no, nothing like that right now. We don't yeah. see anything like that, but all we want to do is encourage people to tell their story and we want to just give them the tools to be able to do that. You and know, preserve and their preserve story. free of charge too. Preserve free of charge. Yeah. Yeah. Legacy, not, you know, right. we want people to do that for free because it's not us about trying to make money off of your story. It's like no, we we want you to preserve your story just like CJ wants to preserve the story yeah. of his dad or mm-hmm. uh, um, you know of of or Richard Keller, and Beth, yeah. right? Of all these cars and yeah. automobiles and motorcycles and I've yep. been doing eight years of beta testing on this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you have yes, from our dining that. room table. Yes, Alex, do you have a cool um, you know? grandfather parent car story that's kind of interesting well i was kind of pondering on on that as as you guys were talking and i was just thinking about uh my uncle he bought a a 1969 le mans Mm. in 1970 Mm. so it was basically brand new to him but um he drove that car back and forth on pch from from oxnard to uh the uh the farmer's market area he did a lot of trucking and stuff like that but um I ended up seeing that car parked in back of his house mm-hmm. in 1983 and it, and it wasn't running. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I was, you know, in young, I think I was a freshman in high school and you had dreams. Of- yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, Hey, can I buy that car? And it turned out his, his older son, my cousin owned it and he ended up selling it to me for $200. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So I drove this car through high school and, uh, you know, ended up, you know, building it up, not purposely. Sometimes it just came upon with a repair and it would gain improvements and it ended up having a, a 428 Pontiac um, race motor in it, Iskandari racing cam. And, oh. and man, that thing was fast. I don't think I ever got beat in it. And, wow. uh, and I, I, I remember one night uh, I raced a, a local Chevelle. I don't, I don't know who the owner was, but it was known for being parked at this gas station and it was a 66 Chevelle yellow tunnel ram uh, with the carburetor Stacked, coming out of the yeah, hood. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I raced this guy, my car didn't look like anything. And I mean, it, it had primer on it and, uh, you, you were the sleeper. You know, sleeper. It, it was a total yeah. sleeper. <laughs> and, and I totally expected this guy to, to beat me. And, um, 
and but I would race anybody at any time to win or lose. It didn't matter. It was just about racing. So did you yeah. beat him? I did beat him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. he, he could not catch me. That's cool. And uh, that was a that was a, a very good memory. Did he come wow. up to you afterward and go, "What the hell is under that hood?" No, we kind of like just went oh, separate okay. ways. He right. took off. I think he kind of maybe he, was a little embarrassed. He had to something. lick his wounds. Yes. Yeah, in uh, he, he went okay. back to his 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 house to go find what he's going to do next <laughs> to the car. Yeah, because that's what I would have yeah, done. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. You say was though, and you don't have the car anymore. I don't have the car anymore no i do you wish, have deep I wish regret in getting rid of the car uh, i actually do i do it was at a time when i when i had three vehicles and mm. and i didn't have enough money to maintain them because i was just a young guy and yeah ended up just getting rid of it and i actually pulled the motor out intending to use it in something else and uh, never did and ended up getting married oh. turned into a different story the yeah. death of the <laughs> car culture <Yeah>. right? <laughs> but, I, but i still have a pontiac gto i've had two gtos so i'm so had a Pontiac Grand Prix '67, mm. so yeah, I've I've had my Pontiacs. Ah, that's that's a good story yeah. <laughs> for sure. Anytime you can beat up on a Chevelle, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> or Malibu converted into a Michelle, <laughs> into a Chevelle. <laughs> wow. Any other any other relative stories, car stories, relatives, and I've I've got alive or past? I've got one. It's not a specific story, but it's more of a memory. I think I may have mentioned it on a previous show, but. My, I had really cool grandparents. They were kind of hell raisers from Oklahoma, not coincidentally. Wow. From Oklahoma. Okay. <laughs> they were Okies, and, uh, but very cultured, kind of snobby. My grandmother, she was, she was something else, man. She <laughs> hung with Errol Flynn in Hollywood in the, in the 50s, and she's a very interesting lady. But she anyway, knew the meaning of cacophony. <laughs> she did, oh, she definitely did. She was a southern lady, but, but uh, kind of a hell raiser in... I have a memory of being pretty young and they lived in Redondo Beach and going down there. You got to see, you got to see grandma and grandpa's in a car, although I didn't, I had nicknames for them. So Mam and Giggy were their nicknames. <laughs> um, but anyway, you, you got to see their new cars and they got a pair of Corvettes. Oh, oh, wow. And one was a, a silver 65 with the 427. And one was the red, my grandmother's, of course, the red and white convertible 66. Oh but they were gorgeous. So it was red with like the white leather interior, or maybe it was pleather, I don't know. But uh, I remember being with my grandfather, going down PCH, and I'd never been in a fast car. And he goes, you want, you want, should I open it up? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, you know, floored it at a light without 427. It pinned me back in the seat. <laughs> and I just remember like, going, oh, oh my God, this is. And those 420, 427s are loud. Yeah, it was, it was loud. Yeah. And I just remember being pinned back in the seat and, and the seats in that, that year were almost like buckets. I mean, there were, it, it literally would put you back and you had to like fight to sit up from it. And, and it had a four speed manual, I remember. And it had, yeah. it had like a silver shifter, like a silver ball shifter with like a release. Yeah. So I remember just, you know, oh, like watching so cool. his hand, yes. like slam it, you yes. know, foot from my head oh, and just man. like, wow. So unfortunately the, a, gene, the gene didn't take i wasn't a car guy, but, <laughs> but that's a great memory yeah, and is. you're reminding me and we're kind of bookending a little bit with a story about your dad who yeah. again passed away last week yeah and i remember we were going to pick up the girls when they were in preschool or elementary school and it was when we had your acura and which was the stick it was fun to drive and mm -hmm. your dad was so excited to drive that and he <laughs> drove it like that <laughs> slamming mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. into all these gears i'm like Cl and i kept flying back into the seat i'm like <laughs> What are you doing? He's like, that's how you're supposed to drive this car. I'm like, pretty sure you're not supposed to drive it like that. He did the same with the 911 with Natalie. They, oh, he drove Natalie, our youngest daughter, to volleyball somewhere. And they, he, he says, hey, school. can I take, yeah, in high school, can I take the 911? I said, sure. And Natalie's like, the whole way he was like racing everybody down oh, the freeway. So. Your 911 survived. It survived, 9 survived, survived your dad. It, yeah. I don't know if I would let my dad drive any of my cars because he would do that too. And I was like, I don't want you grinding my gears. <laughs> and all my cars are super low to the ground, so I don't know. If... But you know what? It brought him such joy. Oh, I'll yeah. just say that. But he your dad it. was a helicopter pilot, wasn't he? Yeah, but helicopters, you know, they don't. <laughs> but, but Gabe, he grinds your gears anyway. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other that's story, for sure. right? But but I did get the car buzz from him because he, when I was a kid, he had a 240Z. Yeah. Badass oh, yeah. 240Z. And he had a Scirocco, which I thought was oh, the really? coolest thing. Yeah. Wow. I thought it was like super fast. Like an 80s? Uh, yeah, like the, a brown uh, Scirocco. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Scirocco's were cool. Yeah, I still think they're cool. Did it have yeah. the Recaro seats when it said Recaro? No, I don't think uh -huh. so. Uh, but it was cool. I, I thought it was loud. And, but his Z was my favorite. Yeah. I always loved the Z. What so, year Z did he have? A 72? Yeah, huh, 70, no, I think it was a 73 or 74 because he, he ordered it when he was on deployment. 
and then when he got back, it was waiting for right, him. Right, right. Um, and he had it up until um, me and my brother were a uh, little. But what what year the Z came out in? What seventy? Was it seventy when they introduced? I want to say it was sixty nine, but but once no, again, say, I don't quote me. Sixty nine is a GT yeah. two thousand, isn't it? Well, they had that about more than just did they that. over? Did they overlap? I don't know. That was the Z around when the. So we should ask Jeff Willer. I was about to say the Z club. Yeah, yeah. he's probably listening. He's going, you idiots, yeah, yeah, don't yeah, know yeah, what the hell you're talking <laughs> about. What you're talking. Yeah. So. By the way, I have a message from my uncle Eddie in Vero Beach, Florida. Uncle he Eddie. Yeah, remember? <laughs> uncle Eddie? Remember Uncle Eddie? Yeah. Did, is the message yeah. shitter's full? Yeah. 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 <laughs> From vacation, he go, right? He goes, one, he, li he listened to the show. Yeah. He does not have a Winnebago. And uh, two, he does not have a leisure suit. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's what he wanted me to pass on to you guys. Okay, noted. Duly noted. So he doesn't have a shitter, and it's not no, full. No, okay, no, no. And he did send me a photo of him with hair in his 1963 Corvette. All right. He's, he's a cool guy. So we'll, we'll, he's we'll cool. put that up there. I, I promised him we'd put it Anyone up. who owned a 60s Corvette is cool in my book. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Like, there's not a lot of a holes that have a 60s Corvette, yeah, right? Yeah. 70s, yes. <laughs> I had a boss who had like a 72, you know, the fiberglass long, the cliche one with all the checking and the fiberglass <laughs> and stuff. And he, he was kind of a jerk. But, <laughs> but 60s Corvette, yeah. I think, is sort of a, you know, not that many jerks have 60s Corvettes, right? Yeah. Hopefully Uncle yeah. Eddie watches the entire show because you're at the end of does. it now. Okay, he says, good. He says, awesome. he goes, I've watched every show or listened. Oh, thank you, Uncle Eddie. I thank you, Uncle that. Eddie. He doesn't <laughs> yeah. have a plate in his head, does he? No, no plate. he does okay. not. Good. No, I can answer that question. Okay. I know he doesn't have a plate. But... Well, then then he's definitely not from vacation. So no, you know. no, okay. it's not him. Good. Thank you he for... was laughing when he was telling me. He's like, no, I'm not that guy. Thank so you for please clarifying, pass it Uncle on Eddie. We appreciate that. Yeah. Now, living a quiet life with his... Um, I forget which car he bought, but he said he had a really cool car, low mileage. But he just wanted to say hi to you guys that he oh. does watch all the shows. We hi, appreciate Uncle it, Eddie. Uncle Eddie. Yeah. We, we do. We, big love to you. I can, right. I can tell the people who watch the shows in, in entire, especially uh, Bernie Herrera, because he's always commenting on how we don't know what we're talking about, which is great. Because <laughs> we don't. <laughs> um, we don't. Because you know, Helm and I paid him a visit, you know, to, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, he was like, man, sometimes I just want to call in and yell at you guys because like, you guys don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm like, I know we don't know what we're talking about. At least we admit it. But he should come on our show. No, he, no, he, we want him. I want him to, I, you know, he's just like schedule wise. So he wants to come on the show because when we went down to meet with him, he was telling us about all kinds of stuff that that wasn't even just about the rotaries and seven stocks, just all the stuff that he was involved with, you know, and VWs and um, he just knows so many people and he's very uh, tight with Mazda and he's got some, uh, he's got a tons of, tons of stories to share. So we'll, we'll get him in here, but it's cool. Cause you know, him and like my cousin and uh, a buddy, my buddy Greg and a couple other people that message us mm -hmm. and comment us, you know, that they're chiming in and listening because they're commenting about something that we've talked about. That's way very deep, deep into the, the show. In, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that's good. You know, um, we may not have a ton of you, but the ones that you do that have listened in its entirety, we appreciate it because, yes, you know, do. we work really hard at this. Um, we're really trying to do this to really share a lot of stories and to just get awareness to people sharing their stories about their cars and the, their loved ones. Um, so it's just, it means a lot to us when we hear these kinds of things. It helps yeah. us keep, keep going. That's right. You absolutely. Know? And, and we know that yep. people don't watch the show. They only watch the first five minutes and then listen to it on YouTube. So we, we know that. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All this lighting cameras. Uh, I, I will, although I will say this, um, uh, one of uh, CJ's buddies came up to me at Cars and Coffee and said, uh, you know, I really like the show. The show looks really good. It looks like really professional, really well done. I was like, well, cool. I would hope so. We spent a lot of time and money yeah, to, yeah. to make this thing look good, even though people are only listening. But that's okay, though. I mean, yeah, at yeah. some point, you know, there'll be crossover and people will watch. I mean, people do watch. I'm not saying that no one yeah. watches, but... Most of our li people that are listening to the show yeah. versus... Well, it is a podcast. Well, and our numbers yeah. are going up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Taking time. But we Heck, we've that, only been that, doing this for six months. So, exactly. I mean, Didn't yeah. we just reach 1,100 on IG? Uh, yeah, we did. Yeah, 1,100 1, followers on Instagram. That's yeah. respectable. Non-boosted. We didn't pay for any of that nope. stuff. So you guys are our OGs. We know? love it. Yeah. We love it. So, but yeah, we're growing. It's All good. Right. You know. Good to have you back, Beth. It's so nice to be back. Thanks, you guys, for welcoming me. Thanks, for, thanks for being on the show, Beth. We, we, we want you back all uh, the time, but um, hopefully that can happen. I hope so, too. And we got to figure this out because we have to – if 
if Helm doesn't join us, look, if you two don't show up at the same time, we're going to think you're the same person. I know. <laughs> we are like very similar. Yes, I can something. see why we would yeah. be confused yeah. for each other. Yes. They're scheming against us. I know yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. I know it. Maybe they're doing their own podcast. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Talking about secrets. Yeah. Yep. All right. Anything else? We, we covered everything. All the top secret hour, stuff. Hour and 14. Yeah. 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 All right. And yeah, look forward to the the big Saturday night shindig we yes, got coming. Yes. That, that'll be after the. Is that going to be after the show? Yeah, that, some version of it, or do we know yet? We probably don't know the scheduling yet of when we, that's going to No, because it's going. We're going to spend a lot of time in post on that one, so that might okay. be a little while before right. we release okay. the uh, Central Coast Racing. Okay, so never mind that. Just ignore <laughs> what I just said. But by the time you listen to this or watch this show, we have we'll, we will have already um, shot the Central Coast Racing show that we're doing, the special that we're doing, Legends of Hot Rods, Legends yes. of Hot Rods. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but we will post on Instagram. Uh, some short reels and updates as we go along here, but the finished piece might not be for a few more weeks. All right. So, all right. Fair enough. Alex, thanks for coming in. Yeah, again, no problem. As Love always, it. it's always great to hear your stories. Good. Dan. Yep. Thanks for, well, you didn't really switch. You just talked I a just lot today. I just labbed, you know. Yeah, that's good. I did hit record, though, on a bunch of different <laughs> devices, and I did set up the shot, so I'm good for sure. He something. engineered enough today. <laughs> yeah, that's I, it. I did some engineering, just not switching. Yeah. All right. Um, we do have a tip line, although the name may change at some point. Yes. So if you have a better idea, better name for it, go to the tip line. Go to the tip to line. Let us know. Tip line. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. We have our YouTube channel. Thank you. And we will see you west of Tulsa. <laughs>